In this video, I will be guiding you through the best weapon loadout you will need in GTA Online as of 2022. I will be giving my own ratings based on my near 8,000 hours of playing time and experience, as well as listing their pros and also their cons. This will set you up to face any challenge thrown at you from fighting tryhards to completing heist or just making money. So without further ado, let's get to it. You first need to know how to customize your weapon loadout. I'm sure, like me, you probably bought or unlocked a ton of weapons that you simply never use, so they end up just clogging up your weapon wheel and slowing you down. To customize your loadout, you need to have a gun locker. You can buy a gun locker in the facility, bunker, CEO office, MOC, MC clubhouse, arcade and agency. From here, you can choose to hide or show which weapons you would only like to appear in your weapon wheel for your everyday playing. If you now go into your interactions menu and inventory, you can choose to enable or disable this loadout. Annoying as it is, weapons loadout is disabled when taking on some heists. So now you know how to do it, let's look at what weapons you need. First up in handguns is the AP pistol. This is easily the king of handguns and for a very good reason. Its fire rate and ease of use makes it by far the best gun to use while driving in a vehicle or on a bike. It can be equipped with a suppressor too, making it the number one weapon for the K Perico weapons mission. Because of its fire rate and handling, it's amazing at getting headshots at close range. Because it is a pistol, its clip size is smaller than any rifle, but it's still joint first for clip size for its class with 36 rounds, if you buy the extended clip, and that is more than enough to kill your average person before you need to reload. The only other handgun you want is the up anatomizer, but not for the reason you first may think. It's fun knocking people off their oppressor mark twos. But its main benefit is moving vehicles that may have got stuck, particularly in selling missions. The Combat MG Mark II is the most powerful machine gun or rifle in a game, but it suffers from overpowered recoil, making it a tough one to use, especially when trying to get headshots. You can avoid the recoil by using it in first person, but personally I'm not a fan. But get good with this and it might end up being your first weapon of choice. This is the Mark II version, so you need to have a lot of money spent on it. A magazine clip can hold up to 200 rounds, more than enough for any gunfight without being caught reloading, and can be equipped with special ammo. If it does become your number one weapon, you might want to consider adding armor piercing rounds to take down tougher enemies, but this does limit you to just 400 bullets in total, each clip holding 80 rounds, meaning that you will need to keep returning to a weapons workshop to restock. Personally, I'm not a massive fan of special ammo on machine guns or rifles for this very reason, so I tend to avoid it, and only consistently have them on two weapons that I will get to later, but it's down to personal preference. The Special Carbine Mark II is another Mark II weapon, so again we need lots of money spent on it, but this is my main weapon of choice and for very good reason. It's good at everything, has little recoil so it's great for headshots, has a clip size of 60, more than enough for any gunfight and can be equipped with special ammo. Because I use this gun the most, I keep the standard bullets as this gun is mostly about headshots, but will take down most enemies very quickly anyway. An alternative to the Special Carbine is the Heavy Rifle. It has slightly higher damage and is another good all-rounder. It feels good and accurate to use, but as it's not a Mark II, you don't have the option of the Special Ammo. You'll always want to have a suppressed rifle in your loadout for stealth missions, and there's none better than the Carbine Mark II. Boasting very similar statistics to the Special Carbine Mark II, so you can expect all the good handling, headshots and body shot kills as before. It can be equipped with special ammo, but I keep mine stock as I use it quite a lot. Easily the best weapon to use for the Humane Labs Raid stealth mission. There's only one sniper you need in your loadout, and it's the Heavy Sniper Mark II. It can be equipped with special ammo, and you really want the explosive rounds. This will blow up most vehicles with just one shot and is highly accurate, has a very good range and it can hold up to a total of 36 rounds before needing a refill, which is plenty for what you need it for. When in PvP, if you don't get a one hit kill on your target, they will be knocked over, leaving them easy to finish off with an extra round. Alternatively, your normal ammo will always be a one shot kill to the body on any player. This change happened with the Agency DLC, but it's yet to be known whether this is a feature or a bug which may be patched in future. This can be equipped with either a night vision or a thermal scope, but I'm not a fan of either. You're better off using your thermal helmets and activating it, so you have the option to turn it off or on whenever you like. This one sniper trounces the other two options and is the only one you need. A very underrated weapon is the assault shotgun. At close range, it can kill anyone in two or three shots, and seeing as its fire rate is so rapid, we are talking very quick deaths. 
The extended clip takes it from a paltry 8 rounds to a massive 32, meaning larger gunfights in close quarters are a breeze. It's great at shooting from cover with its powerful spread, leaving you hidden from taking any real damage. The perfect weapon for any confined spaces or close quarters combat. The other shotgun you need is the Pump Shotgun Mark II. This can be equipped with this special ammo, but you only ever want to use the explosive slugs. Any vehicle heading your way is toast, and can be even quicker if it plays next to a vehicle, as it will lock onto them and blow up anything in that vicinity. Not always a one-shot kill to the body, but will knock a target over for you to finish off. For your heavy weapons, you first want an RPG. Another great weapon against vehicles, but also good for hitting those pesky campers, hiding behind walls or on top of buildings. The benefit of choosing the RPG over the homing launcher is that it first holds twice the amount of rockets with 20 compared to 10. It's also better at lining up a precise shot where you aim it rather than locking onto any passing vehicles. Everything you'd want from your homing launcher is better done by your heavy sniper and its explosive rounds. It's also handy for killing yourself quickly if you need. For your second heavy weapon slot, you want the minigun. This weapon is unlocked at rank 120, so many people will opt for the Widowmaker as it can be purchased straight away. There is no major difference with regards to ability with these guns, but the Widowmaker sounds and looks stupid. The minigun is great for spamming bullets at multiple vehicle targets or hitting chopper tails to watch them spin to their death. Your third slot should be the Compact Grenade Launcher. This beats the standard grenade launcher because it has the same ability but has twice the capacity holding 20 instead of 10 grenades and can also be used while riding a bike. It's unique in a way that its grenades can bounce off walls to hit targets hiding in hard to reach places and also means you being out of harm's way. There are only two explosives you need, one being a sticky bomb. The sticky bomb is great for setting traps, especially if you know where certain enemies are going to spawn or attack. They can also be thrown and then detonated while aiming your main weapon. You can have up to 5 sticky bombs active at any one time. It's also good for throwing from your vehicle if you're trying to blow up a target. A one hit kill on most targets and vehicles as well as being detonated whenever you want them to be. For the second slot, you'll need the proximity mine. Very similar to the sticky bomb, with the only difference being that it explodes when a target comes close rather than it being detonated by you. One drawback is how it sounds off high intensity bleeps to warn you that you're getting close. And lastly, if only to fill a space, your melee weapon is the stone hatchet. Using this is a one-hit kill, which then grants you near invincibility just as long as you carry on killing before it can wear off. It does sound good, but really it's much slower and less reliable than just using a standard weapon and some skill. Many people claim this to be the best way to take on the weapons prep for the K Perico heist, but those people are noobs who have no idea what they're doing. Stone Hatchet can only be unlocked by completing the Bounty Target Challenge sent to you by Maud. My everyday starting loadout when I first join a lobby looks like this. I have the AP Pistol, the Combat MG Mark II, Special Carbine Mark II, Heavy Sniper Mark II with explosive rounds, Assault Shotgun, RPG and Sticky Bombs. If you have any other tips you think I missed, or you're angry that you're a stone hatchet user and you want to moan about me calling you a noob, then just let me know in the comments. So if you found this video useful, please drop it a like and maybe consider subscribing for more. I'm Beats Down, and I'll see you in the next one.